You're plugged in to The Real Life Show with your host, Malachi Malay. And co-host, Catherine Martins. Where real life issues meet real life solutions. Problems are not solitary things. Someone has been through what you're going through. So let's talk about real life. City. I grab the mic when I speak cause I rep my city I'm down for the long run cause I bleed my city It's about time you respect my city What's up everybody? This is Malachi Malay and Kirsten Burke And Kirsten has a very special, special, special announcement for St. Thomas. You, you want to tell? Yeah, I'm so excited to say we have Billy Blanks coming to St. Thomas. Um, most of you would know who Billy Blanks is. He is what he calls himself as the grandfather of fitness. Uh -huh. um, he is a fitness guru. He yes. created Tybo Fitness, which is, I totally think, um, the best cardio sculpting workout of all time. If you want abs, then you want to do Tybo. <laughs> no doubt. Like this, this dude's a legend, you know? Yeah, totally. And, and I was talking to you earlier, but you got to tell me how you got to this point of able to bring somebody with a category of Billy Blanks here to St. Thomas. Well, Billy, uh, Billy is my trainer. I've been trained by Billy since uh, 2007. Okay. I was 14 weeks pregnant and absolutely terrified. And I, I was so grateful I was pregnant because then I could not do everything as hard as I had to do it. <laughs> okay. Um, but no, so he trained me and uh, I'm one of his instructors. Um, not currently certified, it has expired, just they had some changes in their business. Mm -hmm. um, but so I, he's coming to Toronto for the CanFit World uh, Conference, okay. fitness yes. conference. Yes. So when I found out, I asked him if he'd come and he said yes. See, see, you guys, uh, most of you guys know exactly who Billy Blanks is, right? So, you know, he's, he's, he's here Friday. Yes. Okay. Now, how can people get tickets for this event? You can get tickets um, through Facebook. There's a, if you search for in the events, it's called Workout with Billy Blanks. Okay. Or you can go to the Faith Church, Faith St. Thomas uh, dot church center dot com. Mm -hmm and the tickets are there 25 bucks advance 30 dollars at the door and 16 and under are 10 dollars. so we really want kids to come too because mm -hmm. um fitness is a family event and also we need to promote a healthy lifestyle for our kids so and, and yeah i want everybody here in st thomas to take advantage of this because billy black's just he, he just doesn't go anywhere you no, know what i mean he, he doesn't and, and, and this dude said you know what i'm gonna come to st thomas Okay, and he's excited too, and he's super excited. So I, I'm sure that you guys know who he is. It's going to be a meet and greet as well, where they can meet him. Yeah, a meet and greet. You can get your photo done. Um, bring something if you want him to sign. Okay, uh, he's got a pretty strict schedule. I have to have him back on the road at 7:30. So uh, come early, get your photos, get ready to sweat, and you don't have to be. Um, you don't have to be in crazy shape like definitely he'll push everyone mm -hmm. but I think it's almost even more important for those people who are stuck because mm -hmm. um, he will motivate and inspire you and yeah. I was saying to someone that it'll just shift them mm -hmm. maybe get you out of the rut or um, just really inspire you to step it up a notch and then propel you into reaching your goals or going even more beyond what you thought you could be and you know what, I see your passion as you're talking about this, right? So I just, for, for the last question, um, I want to ask you, what does fitness mean to you? Well, it's been a lifeline for me, probably. Okay. I think I've, actually, I've done Taibo since the videos in 99. Yeah. And I didn't understand. In the videos, they would always talk about training from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And I, I, didn't, I didn't get that. I thought it was such this weird rhetoric and and then doing his camps and mm. uh doing his daughter shelly doing her camps and they really talk about how fitness it's practice it's practice for real life so they often talk about going through the fire uh tapping into your spirit these things when you push yourself and and practice going through hard stuff and then being victorious and mm -hmm. being empowered that's 
what fitness is to me is like my practice for real life, what grounds me and, and keeps me strong. In here, and in here, and in here. There's <laughs> uh, no better way for me to, <laughs> to end this, you know? There's nothing for me to say. Friday, what's Friday? August 10th. August 10th, okay. I'm getting gold in my brain, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, Friday, August 10th, what time? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Be a little bit early. Okay. Billy always wants people early, even if he's late. And the other thing, um, any proceeds of this money, this isn't a make money event for anyone, mm -hmm. except for there's a mission in India that uh, Faith, um, the sisterhood is doing. Yeah. And they're doing leadership. They're teaching women how to make jewelry so they can start their own business and working with uh, homeless children and youth. So it's really cool. So I just hope there'll be an amazing turnout not only for Billy to see this amazing city and how much we uh, work together, but also for the India mission. And you know what, I gotta stress that India mission because you know, uh, Faith is an amazing church and, and for several, several years, it always reached out uh, outside of the country to help individuals just, you know, obtain skills that they could actually make a living off of it, right? So, you know, if, if, if you're not even a fitness freak, this, as she was saying, it's not really about fitness. This is about life yeah. and your support for this single event it's going to empower somebody in a different country to actually... They, 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 to and, better their life. To better their life. Yep. And they're able to feed their family to the skills that this, the, the, this money is going to. Yep. So, Friday, August the 10th, 6.30, come no, early. No, not 6.30. No! 5. I five. mean 6. <laughs> 6? 6 o'clock, but be early. So, 5. Was that too early? No, five, they have a day camp. So. Okay, okay, 5.30. Yeah, sure, cool. 5.30, quarter to 6. We're going to go with that, okay? Yeah. I want you guys to be there, Malachi Malay and... Kirsten Burke. St. Thomas Proud TV. We out. See ya. Thank you guys for supporting them. I really appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to come work you out. Like I said earlier, you know, I started working out when I was 11 years old. My first thing I started doing was I was doing Taekwondo. Uh, I just want to say, as a parent, you might have a child like I was, right? When I was born, I was born with a learning disorder. And a learning disorder I had that most, most people really didn't know anything about, it was, it was dyslexia. And having dyslexia gave me a hard time at school. And when having that as a child, being shy at the same time gave me a harder opportunity to ask questions. I was too nervous about asking questions. And then I felt like I was too dumb to read. So it caused me a problem. But I got involved with martial arts. When I got involved with martial arts, it gave me a chance to see out of my own eyes that I could be successful. It showed me a focus that I'd never seen before. And when I got that focus, it gave me a chance to see that I could do something. And think about it. I was a kid that couldn't read a book, right? But I created a word. It's called Taibo. It revolutionized the whole fitness world. So I tell parents, there, there could be, you there could be a child there, just like me, you might be going through the same thing. All they need is encouragement and be able to see out of their own eyes that they could be successful. That's why I like fitness. I always tell people that fitness is more than just being physical. Think about it. If you mention the word physical, fitness, fitness to most people, most people think you have to be physical because the first thing they have. Think about it, right? If I say physical fitness, what do you think about doing? Being physical, right? So think about this, if physical fitness was about being physical, and we all are very physical people, right? Why is the world in shape? Because it goes to show you that physical fitness is more than just being physical. So I always tell my clients 24 seven, when you come in a room, right? Most people come in a room and they try to be mindless. If you try to be mindless in a workout, you can't expect results. Everybody say this, say I. I look, look and, act and act like my mind and will. Like my mind and will. That's a powerful statement. Think about what you say when you say that. Say it again. I, I look, look and, act and act like my mind and will. Like my mind and will. Say it like this. I, I look, look and, act and act like my body. Like my body. 
That's how most people are. They look in the mirror, they get discouraged. They get on the scale, they get discouraged. No, I'm a mind and a will. I make my body do what I want it to do. Most people don't. Who owns your body? Me. 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 Say it with confidence. Because if you don't say it with confidence, your own body won't react. Watch me. Ask me to say it. Who owns, Who owns your body? Me. <laughs> so think about that. Think about that. If I don't say it with confidence, my own body, my mind won't even pick it up. Ask me that question again. Who owns your body? I do. I own it. I make it do what I want it to do. That's right. This is my body. I can make it do what I want it to do. So I always tell people, who owns your body? You do. Right? Who owns your body? I do. Prove it. Bring it under order. If you own your body, prove it. Bring it under order. Because you can't. Think about moms. I, think, I say this to moms every day. Moms are powerful. They take care of food, they watch the kids, they do all these different things, but then they, they get work. <laughs> right, but listen to me. But then they get depressed because they're doing so much. But I say, if you look out of your own eyes and see what you're doing, you're powerful. Look out of your eyes and see the gift that you can go through all this stuff and sometimes you can push stress away. But most people don't. Most people do what in the morning? They practice stress. When they get up out of the bed, they practice stress. <laughs> Think about it. And they can become so good at it, they can become so good at practicing stress that they don't even recognize they practice it. They get up and go, oh, oh my God, this day gonna be so hard. Look at me, I'm practicing stress. <laughs> when you guys first came in that room, when you come in this room, stress came in the room with you. But think about this. How do you get rid of stress? Huh? Focusing on what you're Okay, focusing on what you're grateful for. How do you get rid of stress, everybody? Exercise. Exercise. Exercise can give you. What is it? Think positive. Positive. Remember, all those things can be activated, but it doesn't get rid of stress. What's get, what gets rid of stress faith. is. Huh? Faith. Faith can get rid of stress, but if you don't voice faith, it won't happen. Listen, what helps you get rid of stress is when I had you guys count. You don't think about stress because you count it. it. It brings you into the moment. That's one reason they have people count. I make them count because they can't, they ain't got time to think about stress because they're going one, two, three, four. <laughs> right? So let me, let me hear everybody, let me hear everybody count to eight fast. Ready, go. How much time did you get a chance to think about your problem? None. So that's why I tell my clients, when you're in the room, if I can get you to count, you know what happens to stress? Stress leaves the room. It goes like this. It leaves the room and then it goes just like this. <laughs> Think about your stress. It leaves the room and it goes just like this. Okay. You think you're doing something, huh? Watch. As soon as you get ready to walk out that door, I'm going to jump right back on you. <laughs> Listen to me. That's what people do. They allow stress to come back in their life because they practice it so much. And I always tell my clients, listen, when you get a cell phone, you do what, you, to be good at your cell phone, you got to do what? Practice. Practice. And then you be good at it. Kids are so good at it, they can do anything with it. Think about it. You got to practice. So to be good at something, what do I got to do? Practice. So think about that. For me to love her, what do I got to do? Practice. Because it won't happen. I tell my wife that 24-7. If we don't practice loving each other, it won't happen. Now listen to me, serious. I have to practice loving my wife. Like I gotta practice loving my daughter. I gotta practice loving my, I gotta practice that stuff. And I'm practicing, it won't happen. I can love, hey, how you doing? I can love her, but I, it ain't gonna be the way it should be. So I gotta practice. I know when I practice something, I'll become good at it. Even if it's bad, I'll become good at it. <laughs> if you practice it, you become good. Right? Right. So all I tell you guys with fitness, all you need to do is, because there ain't, ain't no difference in you controlling your body and you controlling the phone. I say the difference between a phone and fitness, they're two kind of tools. Phone is a, a good communication tool, right? My mind and my body, they're two good, two good communication tools. They want to activate off each other. They want to work with each other. But what mo most people do is they don't activate what's going on. That's why I like to teach people in the beginning and say, hey, listen, I need, I need you to be with me 24 seven. 
Give me, if I, if I was here for six weeks, give me six weeks, everybody in this room, watch this in six weeks. I guarantee you, you might not like me, <laughs> but that's not my goal. My goal is to help you get ready to do what you need to do to help yourself be the best you can be. And at the end of it, you might say, hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Even though I don't like you, I appreciate what you do. <laughs> That's the best way to go. Y'all understand, as a trainer, I always tell my clients, I'm not, you're not here for me to like me. I like for you to like me, but my goal is I got to get you in shape. And sometimes you're not going to like what I say to you. Y'all, hello? <laughs> so think about that. You know, your children, sometimes they don't like what you say to them. Yeah, but you're looking out for their best interests. They might not like what you say, but they you looking out for their best interests, so they go, my mom, my dad is cool. Oh, sometimes I don't like them, but you know. <laughs> but at the end, you go, oh, I'm glad my mom and dad was like that, because now look at where I am today. I had, a, I had a father who was very strict, and I felt like if he didn't do what he did, I'd probably be in jail somewhere. I have 10 brothers and five sisters. Oh my! Wow. And to be able to have ten boys in the house, and you got your father got to be activated. Plus, I grew up in the streets. We all grew up in the streets, so he knew that if he didn't protect us from the street, that we would end up in trouble. But none of my brothers ever got in trouble. None of them ever been to jail. None of them. Not, none of them. Oh, my father will let you live in jail if you got. <laughs> I was pretty blessed. But listen, guys, I just want to say, look, you got a great teacher here. She loves teaching. She, you know, she came and experienced Taiwan with me in California. I made her cry. We made all kinds of things about crying. But well, this give her a chance to see out of her eyes how much authority and power she has. And when you, know in your, when you know in your heart how much authority and power you have, who can beat you? No. Serious. The only person who can defeat you is yourself. What's the most powerful thing in the world? The mind is not powerful without this. Self-love. What? Self-love. <laughs> what? Self-love. Self-love. Listen to me. The most powerful. See, love, and you can say all these things. I'm going to tell you something at the end of this thing, because you got to catch this, right? The most powerful thing to me in the world, and God created it, is words. Who words do you believe the most? Your own, right? Yeah. Hello? Yes. yes. Who words do you know the most? Your own. Your own. Listen to my words. That looks too hard. I don't know why I'm going to that job interview. I ain't going to get it. I'm working out, not losing weight. You're right. You cannot surpass what you say. What you think out your mind, what you say out your mouth, your body cannot surpass it because your body going to do what you believe in and what you know. I know and I believe in my word. So if I say this, I don't know why I'm going to, I know, oh man, that's too hard for me. you never been to do that. That's too hard for you. So I always tell people, you gotta watch your ear gate. You gotta guard your ear gate. You gotta guard, because if you don't, people will quit. You ever hear somebody say this? Hey, listen, that's too hard for you. You might as well quit. I don't know why you're working out, you still look the same. <laughs> now listen to me. People say that to people. And then people let it go to their ear gate, then it starts to disturb them. And then they lose their power. Words are powerful. You gotta guard your kids. I, I tell my child, I got a nine-year-old daughter. I tell my daughter right now, listen. All, you, all it takes is patience, focus, patience, focus, patience, focus. Don't get upset, Angelica. I tell my daughter 24-7, right? If I don't tell her that, she will get upset, and focus, uh, lose her focus and not do well. But I say, life is not easy. Anything that's good, I say, anything that's good is tough. Anything that's bad is easy. I can do bad easy. But to be good at something, I got to work at it. Y'all know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's I think it's really important. So and that's when when I'm looking at fitness, I don't look at it just as kicking a punch. Because I mean, come on. Show me one person in here can't lose weight if they want to. How many times have you lost weight to get in a wedding gown <laughs> or something? If you have to go to a park. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you guys know what I mean? So I say, listen, also too, think about this. I don't have to, to lose weight. I don't need to work out. I can sit on the couch and get skinny. All I gotta do is watch what I eat. So then what is working out for? If I can sit on the couch and lose weight, then what is working out for? The workout is a communication tool between the mind and the body so a person can know. Can you imagine some person walk up to me and they're going, Billy, they go like this, Billy, do you believe you can help me lose weight? I go, no. no. 
You don't believe me. I can't help you. You ask me about your own body. I don't live in your body. You do. Can y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So you, the, that's the first thing you got to pick up. You got to put that, put on your power. Go like this. Shed it. Open it. Shed it. Where's the power? In you. It's in your hands. Think about it. The power's in your hands. What do you do with this power? You're grasping it and harness it. What do you do with this power? <laughs> Listen, most people have power and they die with their hands shut. They don't open it. In order to get something out of life, you gotta release your power and go get it. That's what God says. Now, I can't tell you, listen, I tell you, I don't tell people what to believe in, but I love the Lord 24 7. He established whatever He needs to establish inside my heart. And I say, okay, God, I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna go forward. I ain't got nothing to lose. I can always go back and be what I used to be. I tell people that 24 7. I can always go backwards, but I might as well take God and put Him on and see what He, see what he can do, for, do with me in my life. And he's done miracles and things that I can never even think about. I'll ever be here. But anyway, I just want to say thank y'all. Y'all guys are awesome. Keep up good work. Don't get <laughs> Okay, you guys finished the workout. How was it? Um, <laughs> intense. It was intense, but it was um, amazing. 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 Now, after the workout, you know, you guys were taking in the words that Billy was saying, right? Yeah. So, like, what did it do to you? Like, did, did it resonate? Did it push something inside of you? It pushed something inside Absolutely. of me, for sure. Okay. Absolutely. I've been really struggling to so have motivation to actually keep exercising. Uh -huh. And now it's like I want to just sort of go home and put on my Tybo and keep going. It was pretty cool. And do your thing. Right? Do my thing. Uh, he okay. grabbed me when he said that um, we own our body, and uh -huh. I realized that, but it was just a powerful statement to hear it out loud. Because Thanks for coming. did that physical interaction with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Here's, here's the main man himself, Billy. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know what? I, I got to tell you this, man. Like, I, I, like the first time I ever heard of you, I was actually, it was like 1998, right? Mm -hmm. I was in high school, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, like there's, there's this dude that actually came completely different, you know what I mean? Because in the hood, just like you, our only dream is just ball stars or being a rapper, but you came different. You came actually with a whole package of health, nutrition, and motivation, right? So mm -hmm. that super resonated with me from day one, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and you know, I just want to ask you just one simple question: like, what keeps on you? What keeps, what keeps taking in you for you to keep on doing it every single day? You know? Well, I just think I love God first, right? Yeah. And because mm -hmm. I love God first, Amen. Uh, I know He gave me a gift. Yeah. And the gift that He gave me is to help people help restore people's life. And if I could do any way to bring people to Christ, to me, that's important. Do fitness, that, that's a tool. It yeah. gives me a tool to help bring people to the world. Beautiful, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you, sir. sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. How you doing, man? What's your name? My name is Paul. Paul, okay, you just finished this class, man. Like, how was it for you? It was fantastic. So, um, basically, I, I am involved in, in group fitness uh -huh. as an instructor, and uh, it's, it's always a pleasure to be in a class as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, of course, with Billy Blanks coming to town, I want to make uh, as much opportunities as I can or arrangements I can to be part of that. Yeah. So, so very, very excellent. And he speaks, Billy, I, got, I, I don't know Billy. I've uh -huh. never met Billy. I've only heard the name before, right? Yeah. Uh, but there really is a, a, a great connection that he has with his words. Yes. And he, uh, definitely um i'd say makes has a very big footprint uh especially now that i know a little bit more about him mm -hmm. in the christian community mm -hmm. so, yeah beautiful man thank you very much man all right thank you thank you guys thank you guys i'll be blessed so okay so you're saying this whole thing started because of that yes right mm -hmm. and you know the, the first time you, you actually you know got in tune was when you pastor you met a pastor well, I met a pastor his name is Frederick Casey Price okay and what happened is uh, you know I have it my goal was to win a world championship when I won the world championship I thought something was gonna change yeah I kept looking for something to change in me right yeah but it didn't change mm -hmm. so I went back and I did it again I went and won the world title seven times trying to feel something right okay trying to actually feel something and then I couldn't feel I was still the same Billy even though I had a world title I'm still the same guy yeah struggling 
And then I saw this passage on TV. Uh -huh. When I saw him on TV, I said, I went back to my studio uh -huh. and asked anybody, I said, hey, anybody know this pastor? And this kid said, I know where he, that church is in South Central. You want to go? I'll take you. So he took me to the church. Okay. And so when I went to the church, uh, I mean, I'd done all these movies, they did all this stuff, but I didn't have no peace within myself. Mm -hmm. And then I met this pastor, when I met the pastor, where he, he preached the gospel, he was preaching about faith. Yeah. And then when he, he at the end, anybody want to get their life to Christ? Yeah. I, I said at the beginning I was going to run out as soon as they said finish. I ran down to the pulpit. I was crying. I was this guy who was seven time world champion, had empty spirit, empty soul, gave my life to Christ, started going to Bible study. And then when I went to Bible study one day, he was talking about, let's see what God thinks of fitness. I said, in the Bible, God talks about fitness. Okay. So what I started doing is writing down all these scriptures to God, how God thought about fitness. Yeah. And then I, I, God gave me, you know, God speaks to you. Absolutely. He, he gave me the word Tybo. He cre I created the word Tybo, and I make it, made it an acronym. T stands for take, A stands for action, B stands for body, uh, believe. Uh -huh. So it's take, take action, believe, uh -huh. and then, uh, let me do it again. Take action, that's what it is. Take action, execute, believe, overcome. That's what I got it off in the Bible. I put that together. And I said, you know, I want to teach people how to do fitness from the inside out instead of the outside in. Because everything is about the outside. Yeah, absolutely. My goal was to get people to learn from the inside out. And once I learned, when I learned, learned that, I took it and put it to use. And the next thing you know, guys put this thing all over the world. Who would ever think that Tybo would come out of the projects in the basement? Who would ever think that I would come out of the projects helping people throughout the world? You know, people say Michael Jordan, people say LeBron James. They're good players. They do everything they can to be the best they can be. But I'm a fitness guy. And because I'm a fitness guy, God still keeps me out there in front of people. Mm -hmm. I'm helping people change their lives, right? The goal is to get people to change their lives. Wow, man. Mm -hmm. To me, it was a blessing. Who would ever think I would be that fitness person? I got to go, right? Yeah, we got to go. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so right. much, man. Thank you. God bless, man. Thank you. Thank you so much, Malachi. Oh, you're welcome. Hello. Hello. Hey, who do we have here? I'm uh, Melissa Hereabout. I'm a pastor here at Faith St. Thomas. Fantastic. You know, uh, like this was such an amazing turnout, yeah. amazing event. It was fantastic. Like, uh, like, was it hard for you? Yeah, I did only the half of it. I decided to take pictures through the other half. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, you know, at the end of the day, let me ask you this question. Yeah. What would you take out of the whole thing here, this whole thing? Do you know what? I love that it's just a community coming together. We're headed to um, India in October, and this whole community just came together and, um, of course, came out to have a great time with Billy, but then came out to help support us and get us to India to help serve and empower women over there. So that's that was my biggest thing tonight, it was just community involvement and supporting one another. Yes, and, and you're going to India to help um, you know young ladies yes, um, yeah. become entrepreneurs. Yes, and, yeah. Yes, can you... Can you, can you explain a little bit more. Yeah, so there's, there's three of us heading over in October. Um, we're going to be doing some leadership development um, over there and then we actually have an opportunity to teach some artisan skills uh -huh. uh, to some ladies over there um, who are in poverty. Uh, yeah. Some of them are actually, we're going to be working in a brothel over there. Some of them are in the sex trade mm -hmm. um, and they're looking for a way out and we're going to try and give them some tools just to better their life.